Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to begin the 2018 annual general meeting of the Guernsey Disability Alliance. It's my pleasure to welcome you all here this evening and especially to welcome our guests online. We've done our best to make sure that this is a fully accessible meeting. Um, if at any time you can't hear me, um, please just stick your hand in the air or jump up and down and shout and I'll do my best to make sure that you can hear everything we need. <laughs> I'll get uh, John up to sign for us. Um, just a few housekeeping things to say um, as we get started. First, uh, fire exits. Um, if you are able, um, we can escape straight through this door. We will remove the sign which is actually hiding it. But please notice this sign is our fire escape, our emergency evacuation route. Um, if there is anybody who is in a wheelchair, we do need to use the main entrance. This is not safe for people in wheelchairs. There's more danger going out the door um, than there would be from the fire, I think. So use the main entrance door if you're in a wheelchair. Gina, is that all right for you? And then we'll help. Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, you can tell I can't use one of these. Um, it says here I should make a few introductions and I suppose I should have started with myself. I'm Rob Harnish and I'm the vice chair of the Guernsey Disability Alliance. I'm standing up front today because we don't actually have a chairman at the moment, but that's a matter uh, for discussion later on in the meeting. Um, I'll be joined this evening with my, by my colleagues from the board. In particular, um, Karen Blanchford will be talking to us, I think, at the end of the session. Some of you may not have met Trudy Kent, who's one of our staff members, who will be speaking a little bit earlier on. I think everyone knows Rob Platt's MBE, our founder and equality advisor who has a little bit of news to, to say, and Alan Bain, our treasurer, who will be bringing us up to date on the finances. There are a few dates to note here. It would be great if everybody could put them in their diary. There's a huge amount of work that's gone in by Access for All, by us, and by a number of partnership organisations uh, to make Monday the 3rd of December a big event, to actually make town accessible for people with a wide variety of disabilities. There's a lot of training going on even as we speak. In fact, I think there's a workshop upstairs um, to help uh, service providers to understand how to meet everybody's needs more effectively. Uh, there's also the GDA Christmas party, a definite no-miss event. Um, not only will we be having a lot of fun, but it would be great to have your feedback on December 3rd and hear just how everything actually worked. For those who haven't noticed yet, there's an island-wide disability survey online. I can guarantee it does just take 10 minutes. It is well structured and well set up. Um, I think it's a reputable company doing the work. I've seen some of their other surveys. And I, I think the GDA would be grateful if all our members would try and complete that survey. And also if you could spread the message far and wide. You don't have to have a disability to fill out the survey. In fact, you don't even have to know somebody um, to fill out the survey. It's structured so that it can accommodate everybody. In, in that sense, it's an accessible survey. I want to start this meeting just by putting everything in perspective and reminding you why we're here. The GDA's mission is one thing that hasn't changed over the years. We are concerned to promote equality of opportunity for disabled islanders and for their carers in Guernsey. And we want to change how the general public think about disability. And to that end, we campaign for greater respect for the rights and dignity of disabled islanders and carers. We work hard to influence policy and to drive practical change in a manner that's consistent with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which we're moving to ratify here in Guernsey. And we do the best we can to engage and empower all of our members so that the voices of our member charities and the voices of our individual members are heard loudly and clearly where they need to be, and particularly in government. We're quite um, a strong board, but but perhaps not as, as big as we would like to be. Um, I've introduced some of the main people, but I'd like to say a special thanks to our co-optees at the moment. Um, these are people that the board select for expertise and skill. Rob Platts, of course, our founder, uh, is absolutely crucial as an equality advisor, and we've had remarkably sound uh, business advice 
from Chris LePage and, of course, Aaron Wilkie, who used to be the disability spokesman. We also have a small group of part-time staff. Uh, that includes me and Karen and Trudy Kent, who will speak to you later on. Um, everyone thinks that we've got hours and hours to put in, but the three part-time staff together don't even make up one full-time post in terms of, of, of what our commitment is. Um, so really, we're running all of this on one full-time post, just split between three people. And that essentially reflects the demographic of volunteers. Those who are committed often have other jobs and other commitments, um, and we just don't have the money to do much to hire more people. I've got two... Two machines running, so I have to make sure that on, the, on the back machine that I've said everything I'm supposed to say, otherwise I'll get told off, told off later. Um, the meeting is going to proceed uh, pretty straightforward. You should have received uh, agendas, um, and there was one up at the beginning. Um, we're going to look at this past year and tell you what's been going on, and then we're going to try and explain a little bit about how we see the next year unfolding, and in fact the entire future of the GDA. And I'm going to begin that um, by talking a little bit about my role. So this is a social policy review. Um, and I just want to be clear here. When we talk about social policy, um, we're talking about those things uh, that are embedded in government that affect the way all of us live together as a community and as a society. I came into this job only a year ago, and it says big thanks to, I couldn't actually fill it in because I didn't have master control of the slides, and if I did, it might have got taken out. Um, but first, big thanks to Rob, I know it all, Platts. He would never allow me to say that on the screen, um, but he has a remarkable depth of knowledge uh, about um, disabled rights, about the legislation that's out there, and without his guidance I would have been totally lost trying to read myself in. And I've had a remarkable number of um, discussions that have really helped me to get to grips with what's going on. And I also need to thank um, Karen, done it all before, um, Blanchford. Just as Rob uh, knows everything, Karen has been there. She has been uh, out there shaking things up and changing the world. And I've gained a huge amount from her, particularly when she held my hand during the first states meetings and taught me how to speak effectively and the kind of in and outs of how you influence government, how to be strong but not offensive. Tricky for me. Um, I want to give you a brief timeline of where we are. Um, this is looking ahead a little bit, um, but we are saying... Next year, very soon, um, the ERO business plan should be up and ready. Um, that will go in a policy letter to the states and it will be debated. And assuming that everything moves smoothly, um, there will be a budget allocation and we can begin to be confident that an equality and rights organisation will be set up here in Guernsey. We're starting, even as we speak, um, consultations about our draft disability legislation. And that's fantastic news for us. That means there is actually a mock-up of what our law would look like. And we're fiddling around about details and some more important high-level issues that aren't quite decided yet. But that's fantastic progress. Um, we worried that it might have stalled, but it does seem to be pushing ahead. More about that later. At uh, the end of next year... Um, that legislation policy letter should go to the states um, and there will be a, a debate about the result of this consultation. And assuming that that debate goes well, and I think it will, um, that legislation, almost ready, will go to the law officers just to have it Guernsey-fied. That is to make sure it's in keeping with all our other law, it meets all our human rights requirements. Um, basically, it's going to be polished up and made a real gem. And I actually believe that. This might be a gem of a piece of legislation. Uh, not, no, no rough diamonds. Uh, this is really, really crucial for us, and I think it is for the current states, because there will be a change of government, of course, and it's important for all of us that the law is kind of moved through the states before the government changes completely. It's then just a matter of time for the whole legislation to go live, but very possibly we could see um, discrimination legislation in Guernsey in 2021. And now we do the year in review. 
because I think this is all very positive, and the question is how we got here. Um, I apologize for the next two slides. I will say that they got spread out over two slides. I put them all on one slide or originally, um, because I want you to get some sense of just how much work goes on behind the scenes. First, um, this, this is to kind of set up what goes on. I can tell you about fear and ignorance from two different uh, perspectives. Um, the first was mine um, when I came on as social policy officer. Did I know enough to actually be effective? Um, and did I have the courage to stand up and go against the flow? Well, you find that when you're supported by people like Rob and Karen. But I've also found that the thing I have to challenge most is people have strong opinions but don't know the facts. Thank goodness for Rob helping me out. Um, and people who are afraid of how they'll be seen if they try and change the world. Well, thank goodness I had Karen as a role model. The biggest thing all of us can do in this room is tackle the fear and ignorance that's still out there. Your voices, yes, we represent them, but you need to use them as well. People want to help us, but people often don't understand, and people are afraid to challenge the way things were because they lack vision for how things could be and how things should be. I said there were long lists, and this is just, let's sit down five minutes and see how many things we can think of, um, if we'd sat down for an hour, we would be here for six. Um, I just want to pick out two, and these will be in the notes, so you can read them later, and I hope you will. Um, but let's go down to the second one. Um, it was the Guernsey Disability Alliance that sought and gained um, from the ESS board agreement that our legislation will protect not just in the fields of employment, but also in the fields of goods and services and in the fields of education. That is, it's because of the GDA that people with disabilities are going to be widely protected in all areas of their life. Um, I should see which, because there are two, now that I look at them, I want, I want to say something about all of them, um, but, <laughs> but I, I can't do that. I think something that's probably on the second slide, and because it's happened much more recently, um, we've pushed very, very hard and we don't know the outcome of this, but we now know that ES is going to propose to the government that the way of bringing cases is not through the courts, um, but through some sort of tribunal system. That means every disabled islander will be able to seek justice without having to find the cash to pay for advocates or to pay court costs. And I think this is a huge victory. Um, I just hope that, that, that um, the ESS are able to carry it forward and that, that the states will back it up but it makes a huge difference for a lot of us to be able to afford justice, not just to have it as something that's on a piece of paper. It is very, very hard work, and we're not there yet, but we have to keep believing, and we have to keep fighting, and we have to keep talking. Keep, keep the issue in the press, um, talk to your friends, make sure people know that we can't stall. We need to keep moving. Um, I've tried to keep this as brief as possible, um, it's a long meeting. Um, if you have any questions about social policy, I will be here after the meeting, and I'm really happy to talk to, to anybody and tell you a little bit about my experience. And actually, it'd be great to hear your experience as well, because as I said, I'm one year in post and still learning. I'm very happy now to hand on to one of our newest employees, that's Trudy Kent, um, who is responsible for our member services. Trudy. I've got to learn, I'm sorry. <laughs> On that. I'll do that. You send a microphone. Okay. Hello. <laughs> I think I've sort of had um, written correspondence and some face to face correspondence with most of you. Um, so since I've been sort of up and running from about June last year, but sort of hit the ground running in September. Um, but yeah, you can see up there what's been happening in the last year with the members 13 meetings in 18 months, covering all that lot. <laughs> quite a lot. Um, we've also been doing the consultations and representations on these various strategies and legislations. Um, again, you can read those for yourselves, I think. Um, there's been nine, plus nine, newsletters, medias and communications. 
Um, there's, there's the first Make a Change campaign was last December, wasn't it? That's obviously poor my time. So, <laughs> um, and the awards recognising people that had made a change um, on the International Day of Persons with a Disability. And that's what we're tapping into again this year on December the 3rd. Um, I don't know what on the next slide. Uh, okay, right. So, yes, yeah, so there's me. <laughs> Thank you to the Deanery Fund. So what I've been trying to do since I came into post is sort of getting to know people. Um, I think I've come across some people before in, in previous guises um, that I've worked in in Guernsey. Um, but trying to engage people more. Um, and obviously I'm sort of talking to the wrong people because you're here and you are engaging. Um, and it's trying to sort of like tap in to the other members and, and try and get everybody engaged. And like Rob was saying, sort of like with, without your voices, um, and without your presence, without your comments, without your participation, um, you know, we're not going to be able to sort of inform the legislation as much as we'd like. So, like I said, I'm preaching to <laughs> the converted here because because you're all here. But carry on, it's great, it's lovely, lovely to see. But yeah, part you know, sort of spread the word and, and get everyone else involved, colleagues, friends. Um, and so, yeah, I want to encourage greater engagement and participation because there is such a lot going on out there. And I know sometimes people might feel they're getting bombarded with information. Um, but again, with, with, without people's opinions, you know, I can't represent everybody if I don't know what they want me to represent them on. So, <laughs> so it works both ways. And then hopefully I can then feed back more to people about what is going on and what we're doing. Um, so yeah, active participation in events and meetings and grow the membership. There's, there's charities starting all the time, sort of like Carers Guernsey, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight, but sort of trying to get them on board as members. And um, Let's Go Mobility, Janina, aren't actually members, but, <laughs> but although you are, um, doing some fantastic work. But again, we can just sort of like increase the GDA's membership. Um, and yeah. Um, so hopefully a big part of spreading the word and getting out there um, is the Accessible Town Project on December the 3rd, which you're going to talk about, are you? Later. Yeah. Um, Maybe just let people know which consultations you're doing. Oh, the consultations that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. um, well, there, there's a very recent one, which, um, which is with the um, Inland Revenue, um, where the... Oh, gosh, I can't remember. My words have gone. The um, contributions and tax have come together. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, they've asked for disability representation for their customer service forum. Uh, they wanted feedback, um, again, for how people find the... Not, not moaning about, <laughs> about taxes or contributions, but how easy or difficult you find it um, and if there's any improvements they can make for their customers. Um, so I have put a couple of things out, but unfortunately haven't got any, anything back. I can't believe that it's perfect. So um, if anybody has got any... Um, any comments they'd like to make about either the sort of face-to-face -face service you get from the revenue service or online or telephone, then feel free to contact me and, again, spread the word to your members and, and uh, colleagues. Um, I'm just about to start um, on the learning disability, the Adult Learning Disability Service Review, um, so I can represent on there too. So, again, if people have got anything they want me to take forward, let me know. Um, and the carer strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, being involved in that so again people want any um, comments taken forward they can let me know and again I'll be feeding back regularly through email website newsletters about what's been going on there yeah Thank okay you. sorry about the nasal, <laughs> nasal sound. I'm just going to die in the corner now <laughs> A big thank you to Trudy. She um, she was saying she came on board in um, May June, and then we hit the summer, and both of us are young, young children, and we tried to do a few less hours in that time. And um, what she's contributed already has been phenomenal. Plus, for the first time in three and a half years, having a colleague, so it's really um, been great to have Trudy on board with all of her not only LD learning disability experience, but you know as a carer and, and you know and as a parent, and also knowing many of you already. So big big thank you to Trudy, who's now I'm trying to tell us she has to go home, Trudy. Um, right, so I wanted to talk a little bit um, about fundraising. So 
a lot of um, my uh, last sort of uh, probably nearly 18 months has been about trying to sort out fundraising. For anyone who isn't aware, we had a five-year strategy that's just ending. And within that or business plan, within that five-year business plan, um, there was the resources for me to come on as executive director for two years, which then extended to three. Um, but also at the same time, we were supposed to have three staff, three part-time staff around social policy, um, membership, um, and communications. We never got those resources. So for the last um, three years, we've been hobbling along as best we can and me doing my best to multitask in four roles. Um, that also meant, unfortunately, um, in our board, as uh, the people we have on our board are excellent. Unfortunately, we don't have enough. And we never had anyone really with any fundraising um, experience. And in the past, GDA has been run on... Um, volunteers phenomenal volunteers putting in huge amounts of effort so i'm um, rob and also shalane um, for anyone that will remember um unfortunately the way we just don't have people out there anymore that are willing to put 58 hours a week in for a couple of years or 11 in rob's case um so the idea was to sort of fundraise to make sure that we'd still have um people like myself um, running and organizing and doing the operational as well as the um wheel matter and member side so it was a difficult year. It wasn't something that we had in the background in 2017. Um, we decided to tackle this in a number of ways, asking members to help. This was an extremely difficult process. We've never asked our membership before to contribute. It wasn't something that was particularly well received. You know, people feel that either government should be um, supporting the GDA or a combination of that, businesses, the foundations, um, you know, and the membership. And um, But we did, to be fair, have some support that was, was great. But, um, you know, on the whole, it wasn't, I think it's an area that's very difficult for us. We did formally um, write to the government requesting funding. So although we'd always been informally told um, no, and, and in case anyone's not clear, in 11 years we haven't received a penny um, from the government, um, so we definitely are a charity without government backing, um, and we were declined for that. So we just felt it was important that we actually put in a formal request. We set up the Friends of the GDA, and we had a phenomenal summer, August, never a good time to have a ball um, or to do flag raise. And yet, even without that, the generosity of our members, um, Kath um, Cook, who was running that, that ball, and all of our volunteers and businesses and sponsors, we, we've raised a phenomenal, actually, it ended up being 11,000 in 10 days. So phenomenal effort there, which um, is obviously giving us um, support going into the future for for the um, membership side. Um, we've made multiple applications to foundations and trusts. We've written to our own friends and family, especially um, um, Rob, and we've put out mail shots and letters to businesses. So I think for, for a group that isn't, doesn't have a fundraising background, we've probably done our absolute ultimate to get there. And on the back of that, there's some good and there's some bad news. So um, I'm really excited that we um, managed to secure two of the roles that we felt were absolutely core. core. And so that's um, Rob Harnish's role as social policy advisor. Legislation and social policy is absolutely core to the GDA. And we spent a long time in the exec really talking about that. What is it that we do? What is our core? And hence why we mentioned our mission before. And um, so Rob volunteers and now works um, a day a week um, doing social policy and taking what I was doing on the Disability and Inclusion Strategy Board, what we were doing with legislation, um, the Equality Rights Organisation and a couple of other strands with that. So thank you, Rob. He's doing phenomenally well there. And of course, Trudy, just been excellent to finally have somebody that is dedicated um, to our members part time. And um, Sue, who's just vanished, has been supporting Trudy uh, as well, which is great. And then um, the unfortunate news, obviously, that we haven't managed to secure funding for the partnership side. We probably, um, it was a new model. Uh, it's a model that we only started fundraising for this year. And I think we've learned with fundraising, you need 18 months or more. Um, and we, we just haven't allowed or um, known enough time for that. So unfortunately, um, th oh, that side. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, unfortunately, that didn't didn't work out. They um, resigned, so we had Kath McCook um, that came in to try and help with that. Um, but unfortunately, um, with friends of the GDR, I think it's 
um, really difficult um, to get people that actually have that experience and are able to, to work that. Um, we had a couple of internal meetings then. We still had a different board then, and unfortunately that didn't um, work through, which is obviously really unfortunate. And then I had to try and um, pick that up. But, um, yeah, that's where we are today, um, unfortunately. Um, so I think the celebration is around the fact that um, today could have been a, a worse picture where we actually didn't have any support at all, but instead we are at least celebrating that we have um, Rob and we have Trudy, and those are our core parts of the GDA. We just wanted to thank the members that have supported us. So when I said we wrote to members, many of them were unable to financially support us. So, for example, Ron Short have supported us with Rob's time. Autism Guernsey are supporting us with office space that we're moving to at some stage. Um, Wigwam and a couple of other members are talking about supporting us for the social policy work that we do, and we'd love to see more members being able to do that. We've had individual donations. We were hoping for many um, small ones. Um, they didn't really hurt. We were hoping to get like a little bit of a ball rolling or you know monthly direct debits. That didn't really work, but we did have a few people that made some very generous donations that we're extremely grateful for. And even if people have been un unable to do the financial side, it's the fact they've written back, supported us, in other words, by volunteering or providing ideas or getting involved. So we do, do thank our members um, for that. The most exciting part of the sponsorship is very, very new. Um, it hasn't publicly um, been released yet, but um, we're really um, very grateful to Carey Group has taken us on as their charity of the year, starting um, very soon, um, and also um, working with um, Praxis. Um, and I'll pass over to Alan. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Alan Bain. Um, Please note this is my second year in post uh, and I'm pleased to present the following report. Um, the financial results that are set out in the handouts uh, are for the year end of 30th of April 2018, so it's about seven months ago. Um, so it is backward looking in some respects. Total income is up by approximately £12,000, largely due to grants being up by 1500 as we recognise the final transfer of the invaluable support put it from... <laughs> from the Guernsey Community Foundation grant that we received. Fundraising and other income has pleasingly increased by approximately 11,000 to almost 30,000 from an increase in fundraising activity and other associated revenues. Expenditures increased moderately year on year as we looked at our expense management very closely. Overall, this has resulted in a small surplus of approximately 6,000 pounds, which has been added to our brought forward reserves. Turning to the balance sheet, you will note that the cash balances have decreased by £53,000 to set at £25,000 at the end of April 2018. This is notably from the receipt of the, the GCF grant just prior to the prior year end, artificially inflated cash balances at the prior year end. Creditors and accruals have decreased by 59000 which is directly related to the actual grant being released to the following year's funding. So reserves have increased by, as I said before, approximately £6,000. That is effectively the surplus for the year. What I would point out, as I said earlier, that this is the results of 30th of April 2018. Some of the stuff that Karen has just talked about in terms of the Deanery Grant, the John Ramplin Trust Grant, that has all been received subsequent to the year end that's just presented up there. And that has effectively been keeping us going for the last six or seven months. Um, there's a huge, a, lot, a huge amount of other stuff that's been going on in terms of fundraising, the Friends of the GDA, the ball all this other stuff that's been going on, marshalled by Karen and many other people, has meant that we've managed to still be standing uh, in November 2018. Um, but that's just to put it in perspective that these are somewhat backward looking, these results. Um, I'll take any questions that you may have. Usual silence with financials. I'll pass you over to... Uh, It's in the bank. Uh, as I said, that's a position as at end of April. The position as at end of October is uh, 40 odd thousand. So this is in large part due to the, the active work that's been going on with the fundraising and, and, and the grants that we've received by the, the partners that we're working with. Goes to the GDA, which can then be used for 
Yeah, that's something. If people know anybody that's um, prepared to <laughs> to do so, then to die for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think we've done that. We, we've uh, we've asked various businesses that uh, it's not just businesses themselves contributing, but it's people that they may know. So, um, yeah, it's a really good question, John. But um, you know, we haven't had the that benefactor to date. Alan volunteered to take questions here, and I think I might circumvent the agenda just a tiny bit. Um, do we have someone who might propose the accounts? Rob Platts will propose the oh, Somebody second the accounts. Thank you. Um, is that the name? Thank you. Um, just by a show of hands, um, can we approve the financial accounts for 2018? And account carried. Thank you very much. That just helps us to move on quickly. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Now comes the difficult bit. Mind you, before I do that, I'll, I'll, I'll thank my colleague here, Rob. Uh, it's refreshing to have somebody else battling with me in those legislation meetings. Uh, but we have sort of turned out a bit bad cop, good cop, we? <laughs> or grumpy cop, or cop in my case, probably. Anyway, let me move on. Um, 2017, as Karen has already pointed out, was a difficult year for the GDA. Uh, the committee couldn't agree on strategy, failed to raise any new money, and it was also unable for all sorts of reasons to provide much in the way of operational support for Karen. But we should be clear, the core work of the GDA continued, as you could see from what those very busy slides that Rob put up. 2018 has been different and has allowed us to actually look forward, because Let's just remind ourselves, this time last year, at that point, the decision really was, shall we close? So we ought to celebrate the fact that we are still standing and that um, if you do take a chance to, to take some time to read some of the things social policy-wise that we have achieved, I think you'll see you would be very glad that we are still here. Um, Karen has already explained the considerable effort that has been made in 2018 to achieve sustainable funding. Uh, in addition, there is now agreement within the committee about our future operating strategy. Um, your committee has accepted that the structure we all probably want to see, the structure which would be best for disabled people, is just not financially sustainable. So your committee has had to make some difficult decisions, but has now agreed a new plan. And before I move on to explain the chosen plan, I wanted to be clear about the challenges that we face. It's important uh, that members understand and have confidence in the reasoning that has led us to the decisions that we have made. So the challenges. Um, most of these challenges are not unique to the GDA. They, they, they demonstrate some of the inherent shortcomings of the third sector. But some of this list perhaps uh, does affect uh, an organisation which is not primarily a frontline service provider more than others. Um, the board. You realise there are 450 charities listed in the Guernsey registry. That, there's actually more listed, but 450 supposedly live ones. Roughly, that's one charity for every 140 residents. That's almost three times the ratio in the UK. You have to ask yourself, why is that? I'm not going to give you the answer, because you'll call me a Marxist or something. <laughs> but just to staff the boards of the 40 GDA member organisations probably requires something like 200 people. That is a big number for a small population, isn't it? In reality, though, it's, o it's often only by people volunteering for multiple roles in multiple voluntary organisations that these organisations manage to remain active at all. I don't know if any of you were at Maggie Costin's funeral yesterday. The list of what that woman did and the list of the charities that she was involved in was remarkable. But it shouldn't have to be like that. 
Anyway, we are not alone in struggling to attract and retain people with the necessary skills to bring governance, guidance and strategy to our work. Uh, sorry. Although the GDA has achieved more in 2018, we still need to find a chairperson. I think we've already said that. But we need to, to find more strength in other ways, in marketing and, uh, and, and fundraising, obviously. Um, I'd like to look, on, look at... Well, Karen's covered some of this, but I wanted to put a little bit more detail, a bit more flesh onto this. When we said we went to the government for funding, we, we've done it in a couple of ways. We went for direct funding, and that was a direct no. There was absolutely no way they could fund us. So we thought, well, what about service delivery? And they said, oh, yeah, well, we're going to be doing some raising awareness, which is, they meant to have started it, actually, in December 2013. Um, and, the, uh, and, the, and the pitiful budget that they put forward was meant to have gone out to tender, uh, but uh, it still hasn't gone out to tender, so we've been, we've been holding our breath. And, well, it is. It's probably going to be in two weeks' time, but I'm afraid that's too late, and actually it's too little, because when we worked out what we could possibly bid for, we might get £2,000 net. And I'm afraid that just isn't going to keep us afloat. Um, so the, the next thing that we, we thought we might get money from was the Social Investment Commission. Has anybody heard of this? Well, it was a great idea, fantastic. We had this idea was coming forward, and then nothing has happened. So... Um, so that, was, that, that, that wasn't going to work. We've talked about the foundations. Um, they've already funded us for three years. Uh, they were quite clear that it was strategic funding. It wasn't meant to be sustainable funding. So we cannot uh, really say, uh, criticise them for not funding us further. Um, so then we thought, well, let's productize WAMI. And to do that, so we were going to try and sell some services through WAMI, the We All Matter A. Uh, and I, our idea there was especially to lead up to tra training uh, em employers and service providers. But we, we needed funding to be able to work out, to, to uh, put the modules together. Well, we couldn't even get that. But also, it's not a level playing field because there are some government funding organisations, GET being one, which does free training. But they can do free training because they're funded by the government. I'm not sure we're to know that, are we, John? <laughs> okay, I'm just making the point. So, and we, we've, we said the membership, going to the membership was really difficult for us because we always said we shouldn't be going to disabled people for the money. We also knew that most of our organisations run on restricted funds, so they couldn't give us it anyway, anyway. But a few did, and some individuals did, as we know. But we also went to the general public, didn't we? That wasn't on your list, but... And that I really didn't want to do. Because in Guernsey... Our, many people's view of disability is all wrapped up with charity. And the last thing I wanted to do was to go out with a begging bowl. And I have to tell you, it really hurt to stand on a street corner and beg. And that's what I did this year. And I'm angry about that. But I had to swallow my pride because the work we're doing is very important. Um, so we, we, we don't have the money to continue with the way that we would like to. So we looked at four options, basically, the things that we could do. We could do something called GDA Lite. <laughs> Sounds like beer, doesn't it? But <laughs> um, which is, I'm going to talk a bit, a bit more about what GDA Lite means in a minute. But the second possibility was GDA Volunteer. But actually, G GDA Volunteer would, to try and do everything we do just with volunteers we worked out, it's is just, just not possible. It's impossible to do it. In fact, we've we really almost have never been just a volunteer organisation because I think we had our first staff member within six months of, of, of existing. We did look at merging. We probably could have spent more time looking at it, but there are some really difficult things about merging. We are meant to be an umbrella organisation, after all. Who do we merge with in Guernsey? Difficult, difficult one. Not, e not an easy fit. And if you look at merging with the UK, there are all sorts of other co complications like different laws, different policies, um, and even with one of the largest 
organizations we might have merged with, I, I'm afraid we disagree with, we with just about every part of their organization. And you have to also ask, what's in it for them? So the fourth possibility, staring us in the face, was closed. And, well, we thought, well, let's give GDA a light a go. We'll have a good crack at that instead. So let me tell you what that's about. Hello. Somebody's giving me a message. Oh, no. Um, GDA light. Sorry. So with GDA light, what remains? So what doesn't change, if you like? We keep all our existing policy work with the government and the work on the legislation, the implementation of the disability inclusion strategy, and importantly, our research work continues. A lot of what we do is research-backed. We don't just go into a room and argue a case out of thin air. It's hours and hours, days, months of research that, that, that get the results. We also think it's really important that we respond to states' consultations. We have had some great wins through doing that. Things like the stuff that came out of the transport um, uh, strategy, the, um, the island development plan, uh, help me carry on, I'm, I'm failing. Oh, um, Aurini, the review of Aurini even. Some of the stuff that came out of that has been really useful. Member communications. We have to continue that, don't we? Because if we're a member organisation, we have to be able to... Um, two things. We have to be able to communicate with, with our, our members, but we also have to represent them because we can't do the work with the states unless we represent them. On that point, we are exercising our right to be involved, actively involved and consulted on all matters of legislation and policy which affect disabled people. And be assured it is a right. So what we're doing is exercising our rights. And as I say, we can't do that unless, unless we are able to represent you properly and communicate with you. To that end, we will also continue the GDA website, which is going to be revamped. It's going to be slicker. It's going to explain a bit more crisply what, exactly what we do. Uh, and uh, we will also hopefully maintain our Facebook page. Are you happy with what I said there about the... Do you want... Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm coming on to that. So that's what GDA Lite, what, that will, what, what, what remains in GDA Lite. This is some of the changes. Well, the first big one, obviously, Karen. Let me just get to the right page here and have a drink of water. Hmm. Right, Karen has been... Um, the beacon of all we do, and the force that has glued us together. Much of what Karen was involved with um, will simply have to stop. Because Karen will leave us, um, maybe it won't be in December, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm well, hoping to persuade her to stay. We've got enough money to keep her uh, occupied for a little bit longer, and what we hope is that Karen will help with the setting up of GDA Lite and, and smoothing it over, getting getting all the systems set up and uh, making sure our governance is right and, and hopefully help, help maybe you know, carry on looking for the, 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 uh, the members of the committee that we need and things like that. Um, but with, with that, we will, our, our, our ability to raise awareness will be much smaller than it, than it is now. Uh, this is a particular strength, as you all know, of Karen's and of the brand We All Matter A. That brand will have to effectively go in the freezer for a while. We will have limited ability to deal with media, to be proactive. We've been really good at being proactive. When you consider when the GDA was formed, uh, oh gosh, back 10, 10, almost 11 years ago, um, disability really wasn't on the political agenda, and it wasn't in the media very much. It was the GDA who put it there, and has, it's been there all that time. So I'm afraid... We, the opportunities for us to do that media work will, 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 will diminish a bit. It won't stop altogether. We will be less able to respond to increases in social policy work. Back in 2012, there was a veritable explosion of policy work, and the GDA was able at that time to respond to it. Shalane Green basically spent all her time in government offices, going to 
CYPP um, to Slaws to Swibic to you know you name it. She was in in, in these various meetings. If there's if the, all that policy work starts again, and there isn't a sign of it at the moment, but but if it did, we would be very it would be very difficult for us to respond. This next one is the one that really worries me, is uh, our restricted ability to signpost. Now, our, our signposting is something we do. It wasn't something we planned to do, but it's something that's grown. People, when people think about, I've got a problem with a, a, dis with a disability problem, who do I contact? Well, um, we are pretty much the go-to. And um, I say we haven't designed it that way. Um, it's, it's, it's just what's happened. Um, and now our ability is going to be restricted but what really worries me is there are a number of other things that have happened um, we, we, there are other organizations that we, um, that used to give uh, disability advice that, that, that don't do it so much these days including um, at the moment the state's disability officer is changing so there's nobody to really contact there uh, the signpost uh, .gg uh, is an information point for disabled people, but I wouldn't say it's not the go-to. It's not the one that people would just think, oh, yes, yeah, signpost GTIGG, I know about that. You have to do a bit of searching to find that. So I'm worried about that, but we shall be writing to the states immediately after this meeting to, to let them know what is happening within the GDA and that they're going to have to step up their game and plug, our, plug the gap. So at least they... Uh, It's taking place because we haven't got the money, yeah. Yeah. It's not that we're losing Karen, which is that, but we, we have to decide what we're going to concentrate on. And we can't concentrate on the awareness raising, the whammy campaigns, and, and the stuff that is outside of our membership, if you like. A uh, huge part of what Karen does is assisting and guiding employers, service providers, and other states' committees. I don't know how many phone calls, Karen, you have a week to do with that, but it's, you know, and emails. Uh, but we, we just can't do that either. Yes? Um, the chair. Yeah. Yeah. The question was, sorry, because for, for people online, the question was uh, to, to uh, Deputy Gollop, who should we be contacting now? Who should people with, with uh, queries... Much a question for Deputy Saint Pierre and the committee as to how we, how, how we fund this organisation. 
Thank you, John. I think I would I specifically talking about, and I think probably the point was, it, what do people do with some very basic questions about uh, things that they need because of their disability? Who's going to answer that? Who's going to signpost them to the services and the things they need? Uh, and because the other, the other, uh, the, the other organisation or, uh, is that the um, the state's disability champion is, team isn't what it was. I understand. So, um, you know, it, it, it's all come at the wrong time, if you like. However, we're not disappearing tomorrow. We have planned this. We are, be, go, we are able to give the states a heads up before uh, we make the changes completely. So our signposting uh, that, that we do, which is informal, will exist until December. Uh, and um, up until that time, uh, sorry, uh, before that time, we will formally uh, explain to ESS um, that that is the situation and invite them to look at how they, what they can do in the meantime. Yes, Bella. I just want to say that Health Connections, one of our core objectives is going to be doing signposting. Uh, and it's not just signposting, it's also doing the signposting. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if the camera picked all that up, but yes, it did. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for our members, fewer newsletters, um, fewer GDA meetings and guest speakers. Um, I, I know how important the meetings are for many of you, and there's lots of research that shows that when disabled people can get together and talk about things, their mental health improves. Um, so we, we still want to have some, but it will be a few, I'm afraid. <laughs> And the guest speakers, look at the remarkable people that we, the GDA, has managed to bring to Guernsey. One of the top lawyers in North America came over to explain to us uh, the, the best way to, to approach disability discrimination. We had Tani Gray Thompson come over to inspire us, and she is now our patron, of course. And we had Professor Anna Lawson, who just backed up everything that we've been banging on about in the legislative meetings for all those years, which was fantastic. So, but I'm afraid that will have to take a back seat too. And I know our members won't like this next one. The GDA, one of the things that we talk about being able to do is empower disabled people to speak for themselves, particularly through our We All Matter A campaigns. And I know you've really valued that, but I'm afraid that has to go in the deep freeze. Uh, we all have limited GDA representation at third sector events and forums. Uh, we're, hoping, uh, we're hoping that if we do manage to strengthen the committee and we get the right chair, and the chair is available to do some of these things, that we're going to be represented still there. And this, this one, number 11, possible restrict restrictions in um, our representation, representation in AGC, Access for All, and the Equality, Equality Working Group. Well, Karen is our, currently our representation in the AGC, representative of disability in the AGC. Karen was responsible for moving um, or establishing access for all outside of the GDA because, you know, it was sort of a, a, a service that we did run for a while. Um, and, is, and is vice chair in the organisation still. So very, very important to that organisation. And Karen founded the Equality Working Group and is still active in that group. Now, I know Karen is hoping that she'll be able to find alternative employment that will allow her to continue that, but it's not a given. And all those things are in threat. And frankly, Karen has had too much to do. Um, and I mean, we can't thank her enough. But it's, it's not been great for her, her family, or her mental health. 
and uh, I, I deeply regret the pain that you went through in 2017. So, GDA Light, um, there will be some positives out of that. I'm, I know I've sounded pretty gloomy, but I can't help it because this organization is, is, is very important to a lot of people and it's obviously close to my heart. Um, but our continuing challenges, I've said really, we've got to look at the GDA leadership, we've got to make sure our governance is right and, and that we can actually do a much better job at managing employees and volunteers. We've still got to find, although... Basically, by doing this, we're halving our funding need. But that's still going to be £40,000 a year we have to find, and that, it's, that's not easy. We, 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 it's doable. We've proved we can do that. That's one of the things that we proved in 2018. But it's a lot of work, and we've got to get down to it. And we've got to strengthen and broaden our social policy work. We have missed Shalane Green, who was brilliant at that. She, Shalane loved nothing better than going home and reading through state's BAs. <laughs> God. <laughs> She'll forgive me, because it's true. Uh, <laughs> um, so we've, but we've got a plan for that. Uh, we're, we're starting something called DPIG, um, which is a dis disability uh, policy impact group. So it's going to be a closed shop group, um, uh, social media group of experts and um, or expert amateurs in some cases. People who will read those BAs um, will advise us and none of the advice they give us will be published as their views or their advice. So it's going to be open to some very influential people, we're hoping, um, who would not be able to perhaps give us their view in any other way. And it should strengthen our overall um, reach uh, and understanding of social policy work. If I paraphrase, we're trying to create a way for, for um, people to speak without prejudice. So that, um, the, the, this last slide is just to explain that uh, those of you who read your um, invitation, uh, you'll realise we're saying that these changes do mean that we're going to have to make some small changes too the GDA's Memorandum of Incorporation, particularly to do with the work that we, we undertake with uh, awareness raising. Because uh, it doesn't make, although right at the beginning we had that in our mission policy and that doesn't, oh, sorry, our mission statement, that doesn't change. But awareness raising, it, it, we cannot now be judged in a, as an organisation on our ability to raise awareness. Because it is resource dependent. So we have to make that clear within our, uh, within our Memon Arts. And we also need to, if, if those of you have read the, the, um, the recommended change, it splits out the objectives, um, so that some, some which we must achieve and some which are uh, only achievable if we have the resources. Thank you very much. That's uh, my presentation, very difficult presentation for me to make, and uh, I invite any questions. Stand the silence. Um, I can't answer that. <laughs> a year ago, that uh, yeah, I, I think Karen's done enough. Yeah. She's been through enough. Yeah, and I think it's sort of showing that we need a couple more people. Yes, the the people the people we need. That I didn't really touch on that. The, I talked about the number of people we need to run all these organisations, but our organisation need some very specific skills. There are very few people who have the depth of knowledge yes. about disability, about disability legislation and policy around the world and so on. Very few people who are available at the time that we need them, which is the working day. A lot of volunteers do stuff outside of the working day. That's no good to us. They have to be in there in the state's meetings. So we, we've got a very small pool indeed. In fact, it's, I think it's quite remarkable what we've managed to achieve on this small island. And our legislation could end up being much better than the UK's. And that's because of the GDA. I know I'm blowing the trumpet, but it's true. I'm doing a trump. <laughs> Good. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, Bella, you put your hand up earlier.
pat on the back, and if there's some public recognition uh, for the work Absolutely. that Karen has done, um, she would be first on my list. I agree. I know this isn't the community awards, but if there is one person that needs a pat on the back from uh, your 40 members, it, it would be Karen. Mm -hmm. she, she has been phenomenal as an onlooker. Um, so thank you, Karen, mm -hmm. from your partners in the third sector. You've been a phenomenal, and I hope uh, you will continue to be a fantastic colleague to all of us. With, with a slightly different hat on. And I have no doubt that wherever Karen works, she'll continue um, flying the banner for, for disability. <coughs> um, with regards to We All Matter A, it seems terribly obvious to me that without the awareness raising objective being in your core mission, that the funds will never follow. Because it's a bit like, you're, you know, you're, you're, it's the most fundamental part of your work is, is Karen's part. And I, I'm terribly sorry to see that go. It, it is a double-edged sword, I agree, but um, when we go and sell the GDA, we are a very difficult sale, aren't we? Because we are an organisation that is fundamentally interested in human rights. And that is not a sell which is easy in this country, much easier in other countries, in this, in this jurisdiction. Um, uh, so... Yes, we can sell We All Matter A, but we spent a year selling it, and it's not, we haven't been able to do it enough. It, the, re the real shame of it is, if we, could get, if we could carry on for another year and a half, two years, there will be companies queuing up for what we could do. It is a matter of timing. And I agree with you. But we are where we are, and somebody has to make a decision. And uh, we, we can't just do the we all matter a bit, that would mean we'd have to drop the social policy bit, which is the bit in the end that will make the biggest difference for disabled people. Horrible choice, but it's the right choice. I know it's a bit of a naive thing for me to say, because it raises a much broader question. Uh, but knowing ESS on behalf States is moving forward with disability on inclusion on many levels, and a new disability officer will be appointed, and, and, and some of the roles may change. And and the employment and rights commission of some kind will be developed. It almost <coughs> the, pro, the aspirations we heard in the last term during the um, then policy council era of a social contract of the third sector is going in reverse because we're having to see a degree of state resource put in to move the process forward precisely because there isn't a sustainable model to support a great third sector <coughs> mm. so th there is a broad, bigger issue here yes. about funding for third sector organisations that are awareness raising rather than just providing services. Well, and, and particularly as, and I say it again, under Article 8 uh, of the Convention, when the states agreed in November 2013, 2013 to comply and achieve the UN Convention, it should have taken immediate, effect, effective and proportionate action to raise awareness. And it hasn't done anything yet. And um, we could have been a part of that, and we could have had a proper budget, but we didn't. And there's no point in being, looking back. We have to look forward. That's the where we are. That's the reality. So, um, you know, our, by our existing, and we'll still have some limited resource, but we will not be the force that we have been for 10 years. That is the truth of it. But I can't see. We have been to every organisation that we can think of. I've also appealed to people in the UK, and that really is difficult. So, there we go. Any other questions? Because we have a little bit more to do yet. Over to you, Rob. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to leave that... that, that um, news like a bad taste in your mouth. I want to stress just how important what we are going to be able to do really is. 
because we can just look across to our, our sister island who have brought in disability legislation. And had we not been here, we could have had now something very much like what they've got. Personally, I think their legislation is going to be ineffective. And personally, I think it's going to be inaccessible to most of the people who need it. And because of the work we're doing and are going to be able to continue to do, we're very, very likely to have something in Guernsey that will genuinely work to protect the rights of disabled people, not just on paper, but in reality. So it's a very, very hard decision, but I share Rob's view that it's, it's the right decision. Um, and we'll tear out our hair about the loss of, of Karen um, at an appropriate moment because, because that's what we've been doing for a year. And it's worth saying we have looked at every possible way that we could think of for holding the whole show together. It just hasn't been doable. Um, we do have to move on to our, our formal business. I, I did shortcut events and we have approved our accounts for 2000 and 2018. Um, we now have the election of officers. My handy dandy crib sheet. Um, it is uh, proposed by Rob Platts and seconded by Karen Blanchford that Alan Bain be re-elected as honorary treasurer. Um, these votes are going to be done by a show of hand. Could I have a show of hands of those who are in favour of Alan Bain as honorary treasurer? Yeah, he is prepared. Thank you, and he's carried. Sorry, everyone I'm announcing has been, has been invited and is prepared. Um, it's been proposed by Karen Blanchford and seconded by me uh, that Will Wakeham uh, come on board as our honorary secretary. Will, do you want to stand up because you may be the least well, well known person? Um, Will has been a co-optee for the last uh, little while and has shown himself to be an excellent resource and we're very pleased that he's been willing to stand. Um, can we have a show of hands for those who support his election? Will, you're duly elected. Thank you very much. Uh, there's another, one other election to do, but I can't do it. <laughs> Standing for re-election as vice chair, um, his current role. So, on a show of hands, please, could you uh, vote accordingly? <clears throat> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's within the power of the executive committee to co-opt some people from outside, that is to bring on board volunteers that have skills uh, that are, are relevant. I hope that you will all join me in yet another round of applause because we have co-opted um, Rob Platt's MBE once again as our equality advisor and I couldn't survive without him. So thank you so much, Rob. And it's not that I don't appreciate our other co-optees. Um, also, we have co-opted Chris LePage as a general um, business and compliance advisor and also Aaron Wilkie so that we can draw on his past experience in the States and in, in government as well as general business advice. So three co-optees, Rob Platts, MBE, Chris LePage and Aaron Wilkie. So that confirms all of the appointments of committee members. Um, you will all have received an amendment to our um, memorandum of incorporation. Um, I could read it out to you, but it's very um, long, and I'm not intending to do that unless there are specific questions. Rob has been very clear what it does. We are maintaining our mission, but we're simply saying that we will fulfill the core of our mission and we will fulfill some of the secondary things as long as we have resources to do that. So that rather than it becoming diluted and trying to do everything and failing at everything, and we make sure that we provide our, our core services. Um, and we are committed, of course, to fundraising to, to fulfill our secondary um, um, requirements as well. So, uh, no, we haven't failed, but struggled. <laughs> um, can I have a vote on the amendment to our um, memorandum of incorporation? First, um, those in favor, please. Those against? Any abstentions? One abstention. And carried. Thank you very much. He didn't read it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'd, I'd like uh, those of you who haven't noticed what's going on. Um, um, we've been blowing Karen's trumpet, but this project she's going to talk to you about is just the reason she's been so important to us. Karen.
episode, so I'm doing my best not to cry. Um, <laughs> so um, I think what I really want to emphasize is it's um, not an, about an individual, whether that's me or somebody else. It's about empowering the voice of disabled islanders. Um, and I know you very generously um, given me that opportunity for the last four years. So um, thank you. But it's about your voice, um, you know, not about myself. Thank you. So. Um, we decided that we'd go out with a bit of a bang. Um, so for anyone who hasn't heard about the Accessible Town Project, um, it's, it's amazing, but there still are people. We've been doing our very best to get it widely known. Um, for many of our members, um, going into town, and especially something like the opening of the Christmas lights, where there's a lot, a lot of people, is actually really difficult. It's noisy. It's difficult to find somewhere to sit, to, to um, eat, to... Um, um, take in, there might be flashing lights, um, there might be very difficult to get sort of seating, have quiet areas. So on the back of all that um, uh, advice and how difficult it is to take part in activities, um, Access for All, um, my, my role as Vice Chair is to look at accessibility of activities, um, decided with St Peterport Christmas lights that we'd launch our first ever accessible Christmas lights um, and the objectives around that is twofold It's firstly um, around increasing what we call the disability confidence of town businesses so getting them more familiar with wording etiquette language that they um, would use around um, people with disabilities um, probably one of the key things around that is the um, hidden disabilities sorry two seconds meant to be wearing mine sorry so this is the um, lanyard and, and the core that forms the um, logo on what we do and it's around getting people more um, familiar with how to interact and work and um, provide services for people with hidden disabilities um, it does work I've just been if anyone's on Twitter you would have noticed that, um, what amazing um, support my daughter and I had this week um, with this traveling so, um, and the other um, thing is to increase uh, disabled islanders' carers' participation in town. So what happens, and it's not just town, but out and about, is if you're getting poor service or maybe somebody's been rude or you can't find anywhere to sit or people aren't addressing you, whatever the issue is, the hearing loop's not working, whatever any of those issues are, if that keeps happening to you, you'll stop going out. If you stop going out, it's not good for your mental health, it's not good for loneliness, it's not good for many, many things. Sorry, you'll hear me going in a mix, I'm really very passionate about this. That I want all of us, and we want all of us, to take part in society in the fullest way possible. Um, and so um, you'll hear us referencing something called the Purple Pound, and that's all about the spending power that we all have um, to take part in the in community life in in Britain, that's worth two hundred and forty nine billion pounds. So if we even remotely take that and transfer it here, it's still around the same figure in million. Now that's not what we're going to bring to town on Monday the 3rd of December, we're not that clever, um, but it's all about everything that we do, whether that's eating out, maybe technology that we're um, um, purchasing, whether it's online, whatever it is that we're doing, um, that we're building houses, we're renovating, that we're going to school, that we're buying, eating out and taking part in life, that's our spending power. And what we want to help enable shops and businesses and retailers, etc., to do is to make that easier for us, whether that's online shopping or that's face-to-face -face in towns. Um, and so this is what the project is really about. It's very ambitious. All of us that are working on it um, from Access and many of the other areas are volunteers. Um, and if you take a look at this, um, if you're online tonight, you can look at this at accessibletown.gg. There's um, a leaflet and it explains all of the events and why we're running this, of which the key ones that we're running are Purple Tuesday, next Tuesday. Drop into town and see us in the new Chamber of Commerce um, offices between 12 and 2. There's going to be a fireside chat there with um, uh, deputies, with the media, with retailers, myself, answering questions about what is accessible shopping. It's the first time it's been run in the UK, and we spoke recently to the CEO of Purple Tuesday, who was blown away, Mike, um, by what we were doing locally. I'm just really impressed, which was really nice to have. In fact, they're going to be using some of our videos. If you go on to that website, there's videos um, from hidden disabilities, so from Headway, from Autism Guernsey, around Asperger's, a lot of the other videos that we've taken, which are your videos as members, 
um, talking about what are the barriers to taking part in life, um, in community life. We've also got videos from our members, so Get, Mind, Dementia have all got really actively involved. Simon, sitting in front of me, has talked about um, how accessible shopping would be better if you have a visual impairment or how it can be improved. There really is some great hints and tips on there, so please um, do um, you know, take a look at that, get to know a little bit more about it. Well, what the big thing that we're really asking our members to do is get involved because if we can get all the retailers on board, we run this great event with Santa, with Christmas tree lights on, we've got the library open, we've got quiet areas in the library, town, church, chamber, we've got extra seating, we've got everything that you can think of to make this an event for you, but it's no good if we don't turn up. So one of the key things to our member charities especially, but to all our members, is please get involved. If you're maybe in a home, maybe New Val Maritain, Guan Cotil, let your neighbours know, take a load of these extra brochures. We really need to see you having a good time in town. There's going to be stalls, food, drinks, you, you name it. We really, as I say, it's a really big and inclusive event. Um, so it runs from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, as I mentioned just now, we've got charity stores, Christmas stores, you name it. We've done our best. We've increased accessible, accessible parking around the whole area. So from Creasy's Toy Shop through Town Church, we've got half of the Albert cordoned off. The Crown is getting cordoned off for minibuses. So, you know, like if you're getting a minibus in, say Ron Short, Cheshire Home, etc., anyone, um, they'll be able to park. We've got quiet areas, you name it. So keep an eye on the website and also as members you'll be getting regular updates from Trudy. Um, so yeah, this is just my final list and obviously I'll take questions as well but I really want to thank the members that have already get, got involved. I named some of those before, either running training or doing the videos which I just love seeing people get um, involved in that. Please publicise this wherever you can. If you're a member organisation, either online or, or here tonight, please, please start to, you know, let people know about this event. It's a pilot. We've never done it before. We need it to be an excess, a success, because if it's a success, that means that these type of events will hopefully be run again. It is sustainable. So, like, as we're running Thursday, we're running Hidden Disability Lanyard Training in the Chamber at 12 o'clock. Once those shops and retailers have been trained, they're going to remember and take away that knowledge. So the idea is that this is something that grows and increases from a knowledge and understanding point of view. Um, Trudy, in another probably 10 days, will be writing to you all and will be asking you which companies, individuals or you know businesses or groups have made a change to your life in the last year. So an example would be the co-op with Quiet Hour and the Hidden Disability Lanyards. If you use that, you know, you'll be able to make that nomination. Um, another example maybe would be Let's Go Mobility, that you're now playing sport and being active. That would be somebody to recommend as an example. Not that I'm tipping you off, but <laughs> I'm quite happy to have Janina, Mel and Paul and the other volunteers um, recognised. So please look out for, as members, look out for that email um, about what to do to to make your nominations for the awards um, and that's really it really as a pilot event we'd love your feedback so on the 11th of December as Trudy mentioned we're going to be having a party here back back at the Coat Hills and there'll be food and drink and everything Christmas party singing um, and we you know bring back your feedback from that event because as you know we always like to improve so, um, yeah, please do get actively involved. The training's listed here, and, and Trudy's got takeaway posters for you to hang up, or otherwise they'll be online tomorrow to, to print um, and get people involved. So thank you. Um, the, at the very end of this, especially if you're online, or this um, whole pack will be available on our website tomorrow, is the link to the survey that Rob mentioned earlier. Other than that, I don't know if anyone has any other business or any questions anyone else besides john just for a minute <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And then on the same day as, Tuesday, as the young 
uh, markets. That's uh, right. So I'm sorry, I should have so said that. It's a lunchtime. Yes. It will be a major event. When you're we hope so, but we haven't got a sponsor for that at the minute, so we're <laughs> a little bit worried about that. Um, so just, I'm sorry, I should have um, reiterated it. it's in here. But the reason we've chosen Monday the 3rd, it's not a great day. It's the first Monday in the month. Um, and and it's, it is difficult for the shops, but we have phenomenal support from the retailers at the moment, is that um, Monday the 3rd of December is International Day of Persons with Disabilities. So it's a UN day that recognises that. And that's why we've chosen that day. Um, so just in case anyone thinks that's a strange day um, to select, and it's two days after the um, uh, Christmas light switch on with Young Business Group in the market, and we'll be utilising a lot of their staging and other things as well. So, yeah, thank you, John. Um, Mike? I was just going to say that the Monday is that the traders in town put it on especially for the disabled people. Yes. It's not open to the general public. Um, no, it is. It, we, we, so it's access for all. So, like, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, parent buggy, or if you're a member or family member, um, you know, with somebody with a disability. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we have made provision. We're working. I have to say, environment have been brilliant on this, and obviously Deputy Sarah Hansman Rooksell. So seating. There was five things that our members asked for, and you can add to this list, but we've only got um, you know four weeks left to do it. Um, that we asked for extra accessible parking. Parking in town is one of the hardest things, so we hopefully we've addressed that. Seating, as you mentioned, quiet areas. There's nowhere to escape. Um, we've got that for everyone, but also the children. There's going to be a whole children's area sponsored by um, Butterfield Bank which is great um, we they've asked for extra toilets so we're bringing in extra toilets is that five <laughs> I think I've hit them all um, seating and on quieter so there's nothing wrong obviously we will have music we have live music on the night we have Andre and Kim boys brigade um, school of popular music there's lots and lots going on um, sure sponsored sure community foundation sponsored the stage and as I mentioned before Butterfield the children's area so there's badge making princess projects face painting you name it so it's a big event that we really hope that everybody will be um, able to support thank you yeah Catherine Yes. Stopped, yes. Your child yes. Your child in your UK. From, from January will not be stopped. Yes. People continue to be paid. And also for carers who are sick on sickness benefit, currently the carers allowance is stopped. Yes. Despite the fact they're still caring, caring for the child. Yes. Sick, and that apparently is now going to. Yes. Be. Thank so you. Those two changes that. So I haven't, I haven't had any official notification of that, but the one in the social media. Yeah, is that right, Trudy? You had the same notice today. So this is um, great news, and we'll put this in the minutes, and we'll also add it to the end of the slide deck before t we, we launch that tomorrow. So the great news is um, around care allowance. You used to lose that if you were away or if you were off sick, yet you're still caring. Um, and so this is now instead, I think, is it from January? January. Yeah. So we'll make sure that we put that out on our blog and social media once we're waiting for confirmation as well, but that is our understanding. So really good news. Any other questions? Or I'd say please take away as many of the leaflets, posters, everything you want. Anything else? From anyone? It's hot, and hot in here. Do I, do I just let you close, Rob? Thank you. It just falls to me to thank you all for coming. Um, I know most of us will... Um, be around for a few minutes. So if you do want to speak to anybody from the executive, please just catch us before you leave. Unless there are any other issues from the floor, I'm closing the meeting at 2026. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>